Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare current accounts for partnerships. If you haven't seen my previous video on how to prepare appropriation accounts for partnerships, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So if you're not too familiar with partnerships, you may want to go and check out that video first and then come back to this video. If, however, you are familiar with partnerships and the things that go in the appropriation account, then let's get into it. Okay, guys, so let's get into it. So the first thing I want to point out, or I want to, well, I want to talk about is what is a current account? A current account is simply a T account, as you can see here and here. But what do we, why do we use it? So we use current accounts to record the partner's earnings and withdrawals from the partnership. So what earnings and what withdrawals are we talking about? So let's take a look up on the top left hand side here. So if you did see the video for appropriation accounts, you'll know partners earn interest on their capital. They also could earn a partnership salary and they get a share of profit. Those are the earnings. Withdrawal wise, well, we know anytime the owner takes anything for his or her own personal use, that's referred to as drawings. And also in a partnership, you can have, you can charge the partners interest on drawings, which they kind of have to pay to the partnership. Now, normally, if you think about a sole trader, the sole trader it gets into business to earn a profit. And the net profit or net income at the end of the income statement is simply transferred to his or her own capital account. And the drawings as well is closed off there. So you have a new capital balance at the end. In partnerships, you can do that. If you do that, the capital accounts are referred to as fluctuating capital accounts. To fluctuate means to change, to rise or to fall. However, there's a tendency to keep the capital balances fixed and unaffected unless the owners, the partners, put in additional capital or they leave and take out their capital. So if the preference is to have the capital accounts unaffected by earnings and withdrawals, we need another account to house those earnings and withdrawals. And that's where the current accounts come in. And as a result, they follow the same double entry rules as capital accounts. Credit to increase, debit to decrease. Let's take a look. So interest on capital, salary and share profit, those things would go on the credit side because they are earnings and earnings increase. Yes, earnings increase the partner's capital, right? The partner's wealth. Withdrawals would go on the debit side because they would decrease capital, right? So let's take a look and see. Now, the examples I'm gonna show, <clears throat> I'm gonna show slightly different examples. This one and the second one, we are gonna have separate T accounts for each partner for their current account. And in this case, we have no balance at stock. We're just gonna deal with the earnings and withdrawals. So let's take a look. So for Redom, the interest on capital is 2,500. The salary is 30,000. Share of profit is 100,000. Withdrawals go on the debit side. Drawings is 25,000. Interest on drawings is 5,000. So the 25 and five on the debit side is 30. That counts as the salary, but it still looks to me like you're gonna have a credit balance. So we're gonna have a balance carried down from the debit side. And it also looks like we're going to right, have a total layer of 132.5 and the balance is brought down on the credit side, 102.5. <clears throat> right, let's repeat for WEEP. So for WEEP now, once again, no open imbalance just yet. So earnings, interest on capital, 5,000, salary, 36,000, share of profit, 200,000. So clearly WEEP earns more than does Redom. Drawings, we withdraw on the debit side. We have 25,000, sorry, 10,000. I was watching the wrong column and 2,000 in interest on drawings. And once again, this uh, current account is clearly gonna have a credit balance as well. So that means the balance is gonna be carried on from the debit side. We're also gonna have a total there and the balance brought down on the credit side. So that's all there is to a current account. But if that's all there was in this video, it'd be pretty short. Um, and I would like to know how to do shorter videos, but I think it's important to explain things and to do several examples so we see different ways things can be presented. So I'm gonna do a second example now and I'm going to use these same balances, the 1025 and the 229 as the opening balances for the second period. So notice 1025, 229 already there. I've kept the figures the same except for the drawings and the interest on drawings. Now, it was a credit balance for both accounts. So let's put that credit balance at start. Balance at start. Let's put interest on capital 25, salary 30, share profit 100. And we're going to have drawings 250, interest on drawings 50. Now 250 and 50 on the debit side will cancel out everything and more on the credit side. That's $300,000 there. The credit side doesn't have that. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a balance carried down from the credit side, which means it's going to be brought down on the debit side. 
So you have a debit balance on the current account. Now, what does this mean? This means that the partner withdrew more than he or she earned. If you withdraw more than you earn, you have a deficit on your current account. And I've seen CSEC questions specifically ask, what is the significance of the balance on the current account? Anytime you have a debit balance on your current account, the significance is that it is a deficit on the current account. The partner has withdrawn more than he or she has earned. Let's take a look at WEEP now. So WEEP started off with 229 credit balance, interest on salary 5,000, salary 36, share profit 200. Drawings 20, interest on drawings 4. So clearly WEEP has earned more than he or she has withdrawn. So therefore that balance will be carried down from that side. We're going to have a total there and the balance brought down here. So when you have a credit balance, it means you've earned more than you've withdrawn. What that means is that you have a surplus on your current account. So debit balance on the current account means deficit. Debit, deficit. Current, current, oh, sorry, credit balance on the current account means surplus. All right, now let's take a look at another example using these same closing balances. 65,000 debit, 446 credit. Let's take a look. Now you're going to notice a different layout of the current account. This layout is used, um, and I've seen this brought in a couple of CSEC papers within the recent past. Now, just for context, if you're watching this video at any point in time, it's 2020 now. When I say recent past, I mean from 2015 come forward. All right. Um, okay, so let's take a look and see what's going to happen here. Now, you notice we have a, a column each for Readem and we, both partners on the debit side, and a column each for the partners on the credit side. So you can call this a joint current account, a shared current account, whatever you call it, it's a current account, follows the same rules. But I'll show you the benefit of using this particular format, right? Now, both partners had a balance. Readem had a balance, a debit balance, indicated by the brackets, the negative, right? So that's going to go on the debit side. And we had a regular credit balance of 446. If you're ever wondering what type of balance is in the current account at start or end, uh, in a question, just look to see if it's negative or if it has a DR or a minus in front of it, DR being debit, because normally and by default, all current accounts have credit balances. So they have to specifically tell you that there is a debit balance on the current account. So please be sure to read your question. It's very important. Next, uh, interest on capital. So both partners got interest on capital, both partners got a salary, both got a share profit. Both also have drawings and interest on drawings. And I think clearly here, the partners earned more than they withdrew. So we're seeing a closing balance there and we're seeing balances brought down on this side. So the major benefit of this type of current account is that you only have to write any of these things, these words once, right? I mean, with the possible exception of the balance brought down because one partner may have a debit balance, one may have a, current, uh, um, a credit balance, sorry. But it saves time, it saves space. Funny part is, I, I saw this type of format brought in the, when I say like 16, 17, and then 18 and 19, they, they did separate current accounts. So I'm not sure why they switched it back, but it just goes to show you never know how they're gonna bring what they bring. So you need to be able to use either of them. All right, I'm gonna show you another format now, which is a little different and is really used when we have to do the, we have to show the current account details in the capital section in balance sheet. So let's take a look at this thing. So you're noticing that there's no T account off, off to the right. So you may be wondering, well, what are we going to do? All right. Well, we're going to use this as the current account. Or we, we could call it current accounts because it's more than one, right? Whoops. Yes, right. So how do we use this as a current account? Well, this is a vertical form of a T account. Let me be more specific. This is the vertical form of a current account. Anything not in brackets or that is not negative or that doesn't say DR, right, is a credit item. And usually um, in this format, you wouldn't put DR. You would just put in a minus sign in front or put the item in brackets if it's, if it's a debit item. And we can see drawings and interest on drawings are both in brackets, which means they're both debit items. So you might be wondering, well, how do we find the balance? Well, you add and then subtract going down. So what's going to happen here is, boom, all right, and these are the balances or balance, yeah, balance at end. <clears throat> now, this was based on the second um, set of information. So what I'm going to do, let me open a second instance of this workbook. 
Um, let me zoom in a little bit actually. So it's a little easier to see. And let me go back to example two. Right, I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit. Just give me a second, let me zoom out. Right, so we're seeing here, same thing. Balance at start 1025 for read them. Uh, balance at start 229 for weep. All right, uh, all the details, right? Interest on capital, we're seeing them here. And drawings and interest on drawings for both partners are seen right here. And the balances, cross check it, 65 negative, which is a debit balance, you're seeing that across here. And 446 positive, which is a credit balance, you're seeing that across here. So this is a more compact form. So even though the previous one I showed you where you had a column on each side, save some time and space, I think this saves even more time and space. But that's just my opinion, right? Uh, let's do another one just to show, just to kind of reinforce it. Oh, let me zoom in again. Right, so we head up, oops, sorry, right? Current accounts. And all you have to do is, right, add and subtract going down. So anything that is in brackets is a negative item. Anything done in brackets is a positive item. However you choose to add and subtract is up to you. There's no one right way to do it. All right, and then um, balance at end. And that's all there is to it, really and truly. So the question is now, where is this useful? Because they've never brought this format for a current account for you to use. So why am I showing you? Because in the 2016 May exam, which is not one of my favorite papers because there were errors in the paper, they, there was a partnership question, question one, and they asked for a balance sheet and they asked for you to show the details of the current account in the capital section. Now, before we jump into that, let me just familiarize you with the capital section of a partnership balance sheet. So this is just the equity section, the extract. Now I know it's called a statement of financial position, but just to save some space, I just call it balance sheet, right? So the capital account balances, or you can just call it capitals or capital accounts. Now, this is my question, so I made up the figures. It was 250,000 for Redom, 500,000 for Weep. Uh, we're gonna double line them, right. So now we have the current account, oh, current, current account balances. Okay, so we are gonna use, let's use these, it's 65 and 446, right? Um, so what we could do, we could put 65,000 there, 446 there. Oops, extra zero. And then we just add them together. We once again put double lines there and we'll add those two, that and that to give us that figure. Boom. All right, so this is what the equity section or the capital section of a partnership balance sheet could look like. Simple and straightforward. And I'm hearing you asking, you say, but Chris, you said that the, the vertical current account could be put inside of here. You didn't show us that. Well, let me show you now. Okay, so once again, let me just zoom in. Just give me a couple of clicks. Oops, a little too many. All right. So the capital account balances, right? So, oops, sorry. All right, so 250,000. Nope, 250, 23, right? 500, 23. And we're going to do that. That. Let's put a double line. All right. So all we have to do, so this is where we got the negative balance, right? Um, so let me do this one here. Right, so all we have to do is, sorry, let me go from here. And we will put them right in. All right, so current account balances. Boom, all right. Where are the green arrows? Uh, actually, you know what? Cool. So they fall, the vertical form of the, t of the current account kind of falls nicely in the columns with the balance sheet, right? And it works even if you have three partners. If you have more than, I mean, you're gonna have extra space. So most, most times they won't require those details, but in most CSEC questions, you're just gonna get two partners, to be honest, right? We're gonna pull that from there and we're gonna pull those two and double line. And there you have it. And if you wanna compare it with um, the other balance from just now, so this is simply a more compact version of this. Right? But if the question specifies that you need to show your current account details in your capital section, your balance sheet, you're better off using this than trying to fit a T account inside of a balance sheet. That's just kind of weird. All right, guys. So that's all there is really to it for current accounts. Uh, I haven't seen any question with any major tricks or whatever the case is. 
Um, but if anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, okay, so outro time. Okay guys, so there you have it. That is how you do current accounts for partnerships. If you haven't yet checked out the video um, teaching you how to do appropriation accounts, please feel free to use the link in the description below. I think you're gonna enjoy that one. I do about 14 examples or maybe 15. I think I do a quite a few to try to cover lots of different tricks they could bring as well, right? Now, don't forget, um, if you don't know, I actually posted full solutions to me and January CSEC papers on my Facebook page. You can go to Facebook and look for a different approach, Tuition Limited or Adapt Tuition. I know some of you guys say Facebook is for old people, but I mean, that's where the solutions are. And you never know when CSEC might tell me to take them down. I'm ho hopefully not, right? <laughs> so be sure to use them if there are any errors. Let me know, right? But be kind, I'm human, right? I make errors sometimes and I fix them, okay? So um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you guys and I love answering your questions, right? I wanna make POE uh, accounts easy for you guys to understand because I had trouble with it when I was in your position and I got help and that's why I do what I do. I like to, to, to give it back, you know? Okay guys, anyhow, so until next time, don't forget, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. If you have the correct mindset, you believe you can do it and you put in the work. You're bound to make mistakes. You are bound to have trouble. You are bound to struggle. It is any struggle where the growth takes place, right? So don't run from it, embrace it. Ask questions and if what you're doing isn't working, then you need to try a different approach. Adapt because change is the only constant. All right, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye. Didn't I go? Yeah.